In the previous video, we saw how to solve a retro crack me from 1998. Today's video is a follow up and we are going to work on the second crack me. Through head 2 as a CL based protection, and we will see how to locate the algorithm, analyze it, and finally how to solve it using IDA IDC scripting language. In the previous video, we were using IDA freeware to solve the crack me crew head number 1. For crew head number 2, we are going to use exactly the same version of IDA 7.7 .7 freeware, which you can get from hexrays.com. So once the file has been opened in IDA, what we want to do is to locate the algorithm and try to find the code responsible for validating the serial. CrackMe2 is very similar to CrackMe1 from the previous video. Here we have a file, help menu, with enter password, and there we can input your serial. If you press OK, we get the no log there mate message which is obviously the incorrect serial message. There are two ways to locate the algorithm. The first one is to use the strings, like in the previous video, by pressing Shift F12. Here you can see the great workmate and the no luck there mate. This being the good boy message and this is the bad boy message. In the previous video we saw that we can actually double click and double click on the cross reference to locate the call to the message box A, here to display the good work message, and here to display the bad one. You can follow any of those cross reference, and then you locate the actual algorithm somewhere here. The second way is, by the way, by Ctrl E, you can go back to the entry point. The second way is to use the imports tab taking the name here and then looking for the call to an API function, which is interesting for us. So here in the list, we have get dialog item text A right here, which is very interesting. If you double click on it, you land in the import segment. Here you have data xref, you double click on the cross reference. This time you are in the code segment. You have one code xref, which you can follow by double clicking. And here you land on the call to get the log item text A responsible for getting the serial. So here we can press N and rename it to serial. In the previous video, we had two calls to get the log item text A because we had a name and a serial. In this case, we only have one serial input, so only one call to get the log item text A. Now, if you want to look at the algorithm from this area, you can click on serial, press X for the cross reference. And this one here is the one where we are right now. And those two are in the win proc. So you can double click on the first one. And we can see that we have a push call, push call. Two functions using serial as the parameter for both of them. After this one, we have a test CL, CL, GZ, going to this place. And if you look into it, you see that this is the good work message. You can press N and you can rename it to correct message. And here we have the bad boy. Display bad message. And so basically at this point, if you want to correct message, you have this GZ. So you need to get here. So show good message, CL has to be equal to zero in order to have this jump to come here. So this function probably set CL to zero at some point if the CL is correct. So we have two functions taking the CL as a parameter. We are going to go inside of the first one. We can already rename arc zero to serial because here is pushed onto the stack. So ESI is pointing to the serial. We get in AL the first character of serial. Test AL, AL, GZ. So this is null byte, exactly like in the previous video. Checking if we have a null byte. Then we compare with uppercase A and uppercase Z. We have a call over here and subtraction AL20, 
So this is exactly like in the previous one, one more time. I invite you to look at the previous video if you didn't watch it yet. So this is convert name to uppercase. So this is converting lowercase to uppercase. So basically here what we have is checking whether we have a lowercase or uppercase. Incrementation to the next character and we have no byte we finished, otherwise we convert. So ESI at this point, pointer to uppercase serial. And then we have a call. So EBX, EBX, or EDI, EDI. Here we move CL byte from this area. So EDI here is an index. Byte. If you double click on it, we see that we have async in bytes, but actually we're starting from here, so you need to press A, and we see that we have missing in bytes. Now we have the string correctly represented. So we get in CL the byte at position EDI. EDI is initialized to zero at the start, so we get the first letter, which is M. In ESI, we have the serial in uppercase, so BL equal our serial in uppercase, the first character. We check if we have a null byte, so if we reach the end of the serial. And then we have XOR BLCL, and we store the result at ESI, bracket ESI. So let me explain. First thing we do is we move in CL, the first character of this string, and we XOR it with the first character of the input serial, which is in uppercase. We store the result at ESI, which means that we are overwriting the input serial with the result of the XOR. And we increment both of them, and we keep looping. So basically, once the input serial has been converted to uppercase, it gets XORed character by character with this string. Once finished, we get out. Press N. So this one is convert to uppercase, XOR, char, with missing in bytes. So now at this point we have push offset serial. This is the result of uppercase input serial XOR missing in bytes. Get inside of it. Here we have modified input serial. So it's XOR already. And we have move EDI a pointer to this. So this thing. CL is firstly zero, but if you press X, we can see that we have incrementation right here. So basically we have a counter here to know so how many characters we have. So at this point we have move CL counter character, move ESI, Pointer to the modified input serial, EDI pointing to this. We have a repeat CMPSB. So basically, repeat equal CMPSB. This is going to repeat until equal ECX times comparison of character pointed by ESI and the character pointed by EDI. At this point, CL is going to be zero if every character matched. And if you remember, CL must be zero here. So compare result XOR with hard coded string. Not really a string, but byte array. I could input validator. So if 
what if I input sale equal this? Then we have a correct sale. So in order to solve this crack me, we are going to use IDC scripting language to emulate what the crack me is doing. As we saw, we have the name converted to uppercase, sword with the char in missing in bytes, and we compare the result with hardcoded string. So in order to get the correct input serial, we have to take the hardcoded string, sword with missing in bytes, and we'll get the result. So the first thing we do is we get the address of this hardcoded string. There are two hardcoded string. The first one is missing in bytes, so I'm going to get the address. So it's here. I'm going to open my IDC scripting page, so Shift F2. There we go. I just want to save this address. And now I need the other one. So I'm going to take this address as well. I'm going to call it address equal just like that. So what we are going to do is we are going to take the bytes from here and we are going to sort it with missing in bytes and update this hardcoded value to see the actual correct serial. So for this, I'm going to start writing the IDC script. So IDC script to solve crew head two. Exorcist. So the first thing we need to do is to include idc.idc. So keep in mind we are using IDA freeware. This is why I'm using IDC. For people using IDA Pro, you can do the same thing using IDA Python, for example. We need to make a, a function. So I'm going to declare a function. I'm going to call it solve. And in IDC, you need to declare variable with auto. So auto, and I'm going to say, okay, I need address, address two. I'm going to make a loop with a counter. So I need a counter. I'm also going to calculate the lane of my string. So I'm going to declare lane. And finally, the end of my string. I think that should be enough. The first thing I want to do is to get the address. Here I had hard coded it, but I am going to use something called cell start. So we are going to select the string we want to work on. So I'm just going to leave this as a comment. The next thing I want to do is address two equal. Well, I could just copy paste that part, delete this one. There we go. So now I want to calculate the length. So first of all, end is cell end. So this gives me the end of the selection. To get the size of the string, I'm going to do length equal cell actually end minus address and by the way i'm so used to ida python which i forgot to put semicolons so very important you need to put it on every lines even here i didn't use idc for maybe 10 years because i use ida python actually even more than 10 years but since this video is for IDA freeware, I think it's important to see that you can still solve things using IDC. So at this point, just gonna make message decoding solution, something like this. And now I'm going to make a loop for counter equal zero, counter lower than len, so very similar to C, counter plus plus. So 
So now we are going to loop through all the characters here. So to get the character there, you do, for example, X. I'm going to make it here immediately so I don't forget. Hex equal byte at address. So this get the first byte here, one F. What we want to do is to XOR it. So X equal X XOR byte at address two, which is this missing in bytes. And now we want to store it. So patch byte address with X. So basically now we are patching that byte with the result of this byte XORed missing in bytes, the first character, M. Basically in the first iteration we have 0x1f XOR the M from missing in bytes. And then we go to the next address, just like this. And after we are done, we can say done. So at this point, should be good enough. I'm gonna run it. Oh, first of all, I need to put this. So everything works fine. And I'm going to go to IDC and do solve. Make sure I select everything correctly and run my solve function. And now we can see strings here, press A. Yes, I want to convert it to string. And I see a rider of the storm. There is no null bytes here, that's why the full string looks like a rider of the storm, no luck, but the actual uppercase serial is this one. So now we can try it inside of the CrackMe. So I open the CrackMe, go to help, enter password, but the writer of the storm press OK, and you get great work mate. Now try the next CrackMe. Yeah, we are going to try the next CrackMe, which is crew head number three, and that will be available in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something from this, and I will see you in the next video.